if things are taking a little longer than you thought they would with your no-code app, there's a reason why that you probably aren't yet aware of. In fact, there are three specific phases you're going to be going through in order to get your app out into the world, and there is a glaring mistake that we see happening in each of those phases. Now, in this video, we're going to walk through what those are so that you can avoid them and stick around until the end because you might be experiencing one of these things now with another one or two yet to come, and I want to make sure you know what those are. So this is pretty simple, but the three stages you'll, you'll go through with your app are one, the planning stage. All right, like I said, pretty simple, but there are some big things you need to know. The build stage and the launch stage. Now in the planning stage, what we're actually referring to is the point at which you have come up with your app idea, you've done your exploratory market research, had conversations with people, and you are now at the point where you are scoping the features of your app and figuring out what you're going to build, when you're going to do it, and really just making the decisions required to actually start building your app. So with that in mind, the absolute biggest thing I see holding people back when they're in that planning stage is when they try to plan for all the what ifs that could come up later in their app's development or with their app's launch or just even with their business once it has actually grown and scaled, assuming it gets to that point. Planning for those what ifs oftentimes actually keeps people from ever launching in the first place. The thing is, those what if moments that people try to plan ahead for, they are things that number one, may never happen in the first place. And number two, if they do happen, you are not going to have the information now that you will at the point at which they come up. In other words, you can worry about those things as much as you want, but at the end of the day, there's no possible way to have the information required to prevent things that happen until you have reached a certain point where you've had certain experiences, gathered certain information, have specific types of knowledge. So at this point, if you're trying to solve what ifs, you're playing a big guessing game and there's just no point in doing that. Now, as a recovering perfectionist myself and a meticulous planner, I understand the that feeling of need to plan ahead for these things, but there's a better way to plan and we're going to go through that now. So essentially the best thing that you can do is start at the very top with your end goal and vision for your app and business. So we're going to say right up at the top here, you have your vision. This is when you have your business with X dollars in revenue annually, you have a certain lifestyle that you've achieved. Okay, that's your vision. Now, what you need to do is break that down into some sub goals or rather sub milestones, things that you need to tick off in order to actually reach that vision. So we're going to say milestone one, milestone two, and milestone three. Now, what could these be? Well, one, it could be actually having your app with your first 10 users, maybe 100 users, whatever is more appropriate for your app. It could be making your first X number of dollars in revenue monthly. Um, it could be, you know, working a certain number of hours a week on your app versus what you were previously working in your previous position or your current position, maybe you're making a transition, you decide. It's completely up to you, but you need to set those milestones that will help you work your way back out. So let's say that milestone one is having your first version app with your first 10 beta users on board. So essentially you've gone from idea to pilot launch and you're just doing some initial testing. Then you want to break that down too. Okay, let's break that down into other milestones. So we have another milestone, one, two, and three. Now, what could these milestones be? Well, maybe milestone one is having the core of your app built from the database structure 
all the way to the app's architecture. So the foundation is built. Maybe milestone two is on top of that foundation. Maybe now you have the actual custom functionality, potentially an integration that you might have. Milestone three, a list of your first group of beta users already signed up, ready for launch. Okay, and then surprise, surprise, you wanna work your way back down from those milestones too. And essentially, you wanna have a milestone to hit a specific milestone for every single week until you actually reach that bigger picture vision that you have. Now, are you gonna have weekly milestones for the next year or two years already planned out? No, but you wanna have the next three months planned out because if you can have the next three months planned out and that three months will get you from idea to having those first pilot users onboard your app, then you have covered significant ground and you have to take the first step. And that kind of is the first big step, right? Until you can get to the 10th step, the 20th, the 100th step. And until you take that first step, you're not gonna be able to plan for the rest of those steps in granular detail, right? So you can have those milestones laid out, but you can't yet have a plan for all of those what if moments because you don't have feedback or information on those initial steps. What if you get to that first major milestone where you have your first version app with a pool of beta users on board, but then, you don't get the feedback that allows you to continue upward. Maybe you get a different type of feedback and you need to revert back down to here or here, right? So you really have to wait until you have the right knowledge to make decisions that are important for your growth. And ultimately what this comes down to is by all means, do your planning, right? This is smart planning, but do not waste your time solving problems that number one, you don't have, and number two, you may never have. Okay, so we've covered the major roadblock in the planning stage. Let's move on to the build stage. In helping hundreds of entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch with their apps in our own private client program, the most common thing that I see people trying to do, often subconsciously, is just trying to pack as much value into the first version of their apps as they possibly can. Now you might be thinking, well, that doesn't really sound like a bad thing, so why is this a problem? But here's the thing that you need to understand. Your app is something that is going to be designed to take your users from having a specific problem to achieving a specific outcome, okay? Your app or the solution is just the set of features that takes people from point A to point B. Now, there are many layers to the problem and the outcome that your users have and then the outcome that they want to achieve. And so it can be very hard to strip things back and only build a version of your app that solves the very core problem and helps people achieve the very core outcome. Because you, you're likely gonna be running into instances where if you solve the first problem, then a bunch of other problems are presented or just that your users are going to experience multiple problems together. So how do you decide exactly which one to kind of pinpoint at the start? And likewise, with that outcome stage, there are lots of layers to that and lots of different results that your users are going to want to achieve with the type of solution that you're building. So again, it can be really hard to strip things back and just focus on the core, but there are two reasons why you really must do that in order to actually move into your launch stage successfully. And that's because if you build an app that solves all those layers of problems and addresses all these layers of outcomes, then you're going to get feedback on every single layer, okay? So during your first launch, all of that is going to be addressed. Now, number one, that's just a lot to handle and, and just to kind of sift through and, and decipher everything. But number two, it's going to make it very hard for you to actually get feedback on the specific core problems. You can't really and truly validate the core of your app 
because honestly, you might not know what it is and neither do your users. The second reason you really want to strip back and drill down to the core of the app is because your users are initially going to be paying for an app that takes them from problem to outcome. Now, the bigger you make this app, and in your mind, that equates to the more valuable you make the app. So you start here and then you build out and out and out to where the solution is just kind of evolving, right? Well, the more you do that, the less valuable that app actually becomes because at the end of the day, again, your users are really paying for the ability to solve a problem and achieve a specific outcome. And anything added onto the app that doesn't re that isn't really needed to do that is going to lower the perceived value. If they are paying $49.99 a month for your tool, but there are 10 out of 15 features that they don't even use, then it's not going to seem as valuable to them. Whereas if you stripped back those 10 features that they don't really need, and they just have a core set of features that solves the exact problem they need solved, well, that $49.99 a month is probably gonna feel a lot more worth it to them. It's a perception, but it's a really important thing to pay attention to. So ultimately, what this all comes down to is make your app work. First and foremost, just make it work. Take your users from core problem to core outcome with a core app. Then and only then should you make it work better. Then you can make it work better, faster, in more convenient ways, and in more enjoyable ways. But only when you've confirmed that you've made the core work. So make it work, make it work better, and then you can start making it work better for more and more people over time. That is the order in which you want to grow your app and business. All right, so we've covered planning, the build phase. Now let's move into the launch phase. One of the steps our own entrepreneurs go through is to start doing user outreach to create a beta user pool before they actually launch their apps. And the reason for this is because if you launch your app without already having that early access pool of users signed up, you run the risk of two specific things. The first one is this. When I see entrepreneurs build their apps and launch without those users already lined up and waiting, they don't have immediate traction on the other side of their launch. And there's an assumption that they make. It's a very common assumption. It's that their app isn't valuable enough to bring those users to them. And therefore, they need to make it more valuable to attract the users. And because of that assumption, instead of doubling down on their user outreach at that point, they instead double down on their development and they start building out all the different layers, complexities, and versions of the app before they ever get the users. And this turns into a continuous cycle of development because they just keep thinking, the app isn't valuable enough, I need to make it more valuable. But here's the thing, more features will not make a vacant app more successful. More users will. So assuming you validated your app idea way back when, then instead of building more features to try to make the app more valuable, the first thing you need to do is figure out why you are not attracting users. Otherwise, you're going to head in the wrong direction and it's going to make it harder for you to bring users on board after the fact. Figure out why the users aren't there. Solve that problem first so that you can make confident decisions with your development moving forward. Now, I mentioned there were two consequences of not having those initial users already signed up prior to launching. And the second thing is that if you spend all of this time, effort, energy, money into building the first version of your app, and then you launch, which feels like the climactic point up to that moment, but then you don't you don't have anything on the other side. You don't have any users. You don't have any feedback. It can feel just really defeating, honestly. And the hard part is when you reach that point with your app, it's not actually the climactic point. It's really the starting line for your business as a whole. 
right now, it takes a lot of work and effort in order to reach that starting line. So that's not to diminish any of that, but it really is the starting line because until you get to that point, you can't experience growth. You don't yet have a product and a business. So if you reach the other side, the, the point at which it's going to feel like you should just be sitting there celebrating, right? And there's nothing meeting you on that other side. It's a hard pill to swallow. But if you do that user outreach before you actually launch, you're going to have a different experience and moving through the starting line and actually entering a growth phase with your app becomes a lot more doable. So we've covered the planning, the build, and the launch stage. And look, if you are at the point where you have come up with your app idea, you have validated it, and you know you want to build something, but now you're trying to figure out that scope and move past all of those what-if hesitations, and you want to actually have a specific strategic roadmap for your app, be able to build it using no-code tools, get those first users lined up before you launch and actually move into your launch so you can reach that starting line and grow your business as a whole. We help our own private clients go from idea to pilot launch. And if you want help doing that, then you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash call to apply for a strategy call. We'll help you put together that roadmap and then really just see if it would be a fit to help you execute on that. So you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash call. And hey, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.